Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in our April Local to Global event. I'm, I'm really excited to be hosting this, um, this event because the two people who are going to be our speakers today, um, we've been collaborating for quite a long time now. We're all part of the Wheel Iveria Hub. The Wheel Iveria Hub um, is a Spain and Portugal, Portugal and Spain working together and trying to advance a well-being economy in both countries. And um, I'm working with Neus and Susana, it's been always a pleasure, but actually having the opportunity to listen to them, bringing the, um, the topic that they're raising um, about citizen-led carbon management, I think is very, very relevant, is very important. So I'm here, I'm showing up today with um, willingness of learning and sharing and listening to everybody who is here in the room. So for those who have never joined any WIO event, any other local to global or WIO talk, this is a participatory event. So Susana and Neus are gonna be sharing their knowledge, but then the space is gonna be open for everybody to contribute with different ideas, with their own experiences, with questions or challenges to our speakers as well. So welcome to everybody to participate. Um, if while they're doing the presentation, you have any comments, please make sure to use the chat and I will then make sure that Susana and Neos can respond it and I will ask you to open your mic and um, talk about it personally with, with everybody in the room. So um, very briefly, um, I don't know if how much you know about Susana and Neos, but Susana is an economist, researcher, and author in the field of monetary policy, as well as monetary innovator. She is currently the coordinator for Spain of the Unlock campaign and led the technical implementation of the REC Barcelona citizen currency. Aneus is the president of Revo Prosperidad Sostenible, where she has been working on researching and advocating for alternatives to build an economic model in which prosperity within planetary boundaries is possible. She actively promoted the creation of the WIO Iberia Hub and previously was senior public health technician at Generalitat de Catalunya Regional Government. So thank you both for uh, your time and for everything that you're gonna be sharing. The, the floor is yours, as is said in many different spaces. Um, thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you very much, uh, Anna, for this uh, very warm welcome. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and um, I'm going to start uh, by sharing uh, my screen. Um, so can you confirm that uh, you're seeing it? OK, great. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about uh, a new proposal for uh, for a citizen-led carbon budget management uh, system. Um, what what we uh, what we are going to cover in this presentation is well, first of all, how to cover CO two emissions, the systems that are available, the type of the types of systems that are available. How are we today? Um, how is the how important the the citizens' government gov uh, uh, sorry uh, a citizens' uh, governance is in this process? And uh, we are also going to present several uh, several pro mechanisms and systems that uh, do what uh, we are we are uh, proposing to do, which is which is uh, which is uh, this this quantitative um, limitation in in emissions led by the citizens' priorities. So um, uh, I'm going to uh, yeah sorry yeah. So um, so what are we talking about when we talk about uh, adjusting the economy to the carbon budget? Well, the situation now is that we have accumulated uh, CO2 emissions in the in the atmos atmosphere. Um, nowadays, uh, only 400 more gigatons of uh, CO2 can be emitted um, before we cross the border of 1.5 uh, degrees centigrade uh, of uh, increase in temperature um, above pre-industrial levels. So that, that is our carbon budget. 
as uh, humankind, uh, because if we go farther at that point, as we all know, um, all the all this uh, the science are uh, well advertising telling us that this is really really uh, dangerous, and uh, we shouldn't do it. Oops, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, so we have that uh, carbon budget aggregate, and still we have a GDP that is never ending uh, in, in growth. So we're increasing uh, no, nonstop. And uh, also the amount of money in circulation, which of course allows for this GDP to, to grow. So this is, uh, this is the economy that is growing nonstop. And uh, of course, very linked to the energy consumption, which is what the problem, where the problem is. Um, so the situation now is that the curve um, of, um, of how we have to adjust is becoming very steep. So the longer we, we, uh, we act, the more difficult the adjustment will be because um, the landing will be much more abrupt. We, we could have started long ago, but we haven't. Um, so instead of a you know soft landing, we're gonna have a pretty abrupt uh, uh, landing when we really realize that we really need to cut emissions because emissions are still growing. So why, what is the situation now? Well, the good news is that citizens' will and concern is, on climate change is that really we need to adjust. We need to we need to do something about it. And, and people, at least in Spain, they are very worried. And I think this is, this is something that is happening worldwide. Whoops. And also the corporate world, this is from this morning. Uh, there, was a, there is this real estate uh, big gathering, uh, corporate gathering in Barcelona. And we are seeing how when 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 the, the the answer is anonymous, we we're seeing how people really think that the climate change is going to affect their their investments, their business. So eighty five eighty seven percent of people this morning just uh, said uh, that uh, they agree that it, it is affecting. So what are the ways in which we are uh, we are I mean, the main uh, ways to 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 adjust uh, the economy to this carbon budget, to to this reduction, we are seeing an adjustment uh, via prices, uh, a quantity ad a quantitative adjustment, which is putting a cap on 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 emissions, and a regulatory adjustment, which means that mm, well things are uh, well products are built. That um, you, I mean, the, the 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 there is an efficiency inbuilt uh, that is mandatory in a certain uh, product and or different range of products have different uh, limitations, but uh, there is a regulation on that. Um, so uh, Neos is now going to explain about uh, the adjustment via prices and quantities. Hello, everybody. Uh, you'll explain the the two the, the two that that uh, Susanna uh, just just said. Uh, here uh, we see the adjustment through prices means applying carbon taxes and levies on fossil fuels. This price increase will be passed on to prices through, throughout the economy. The tax uh, is levied on the carbon content of fossil fuels. And the benefits is the higher prices lead to less consumption and encourage the creation and adoptation of cleaner energy sources. This is a win for the environment and it can also generate significant revenue. Revenue from a carbon tax can be recycled to other policy priorities like reducing high uh, tax rates, ratios or um, tackling the growing government <coughs> deficit. 
On the slide, you can see significant differences in the price of these taxes, taxes and fees applied in different regions. Here, you can, you can see Europe, there is very, very variety of prices, and, and Canada that applies different measures or different prices in different regions. The, the next, Susana. Uh, fee and dividend is based on decarbonization through prices, but with a modification in their replication. The most innovative element is the return of virtually all of the carbon revenues as dividends to households, rather than using the monies to pay for tax swaps or green investments. Canada implements the carbon dividend plan since 2019. This plan embodies the fee and dividend idea long opposed by Citizens Climate Lobby, which acts in the United States and in Canada. The dividends, called Climate Action Incentive Payments, will be provided annually to federal taxpaying households, households by the Canada Revenue Agency. The next. Uh, quantity adjustment. This form of decarbonization, which is already applied in different countries, Europe, China, California, Australia, etc., is a market-based approach, an emission market system. The mechanism of greenhouse gas emissions market is based on the idea of cap and trade. How it works? Uh, to put a cap on greenhouse gas emissions and the cap gets stricter over the time. Uh, the trade part is a market for companies to buy and sell allowances that let them emit only a certain amount uh, as supply and demand set the price. Trading, uh, trading gives companies a strong incentive to save money by cutting emissions in the most cost-effective ways. Uh, the next, Susanna. How this emission market system works in Europe? The EU emissions market works on the cap and trade principle. A cap is set on the total amount of the greenhouses gases, carbon dioxide, uh, nitrous oxide, etc., uh, that can be emitted by the operators covered by the system. The cap is reduced over time so that total emissions fall. With the cap operators, uh, within the cap, the cap, operators receive without any price or buy emissions allowances, which they can trade with one another as needed. The limit of the total number of allowances available ensures that they have a value. The price signal incentivizes emission reductions. After each year, an operator must surrender enough allowances to cover fully its emissions. Otherwise, heavy fines are imposed. imposed. If an installation reduces its emissions, it can, it can keep the spare allowances to cover its future needs or else sell them to another operator that is short of allowances. Revenue from the sale of allowances mostly fit into member states' budgets. Allowances are also auctioned to supply the funds supporting innovation in low carbon technologies and the energy transition. Sectors covered with this market. Uh, this market is mandatory for companies in these sectors, electricity and heat generation, energy intensive industry sectors, aviation within the European area, and only operators, operators above a certain size are included. That means 10,000 installations are in this uh, EU market. That's important. Nowadays, this emissions market only covers around 40% of the EU greenhouses gas emissions, only 40%. The EU ETS reduce emissions by reduced emissions by about 35% between 2005 and 2021. But under the European climate law, 
EU member states approved to become climate neutral by 2050. That means to reduce net emissions by at least 55% by 2030 compared to 1990. This EU commitment implies a reform of the ETEs uh, with, with more ambitious emission reduction targets. The reform of this system is a part of the fit to 50, 50, 55 package. This means reducing the cap on permits more quickly, quickly and expanding the sector covered by the emissions market, as you can see in the slide. And that is my overview of these two the tools. And Susanna, I uh, give you the floor. OK, um, so um, these were the uh, cap on, uh, well, the, the, the adjustment via prices and uh, quantities. Uh, um, and now I'm going to talk about the adjustment through the law and the, and the regulation, um, not only, not only uh, regulatory adjustments, uh, but uh, in general, uh, the law, um, the, the treaties that we have. And uh, so we have around 300 multilateral treaties on environmental matters. But the problems that we have uh, with this, with the enforcement of these treaties is first of all, the lack of coherence and, uh, and greenwashing that we're seeing. Uh, because some, some uh, alliances, some, uh, some, uh, treaties are, are signed, uh, but then they are not really enforced. They're not even taken seriously by the, 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 the same uh, entities that sign them. Uh, for instance, we have uh, in this, this example, but you can, you can find many, I'm sure you're, you're aware of many others, which is um, the, the, the Glasgow, um, the Glasgow uh, Financial uh, 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 Alliance for uh, Net Zero that uh, that mm, came uh, to life in uh, the COP twenty six uh, in 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 Scotland. Well, uh, this this uh, there is uh, this report that is showing how these um, these promises of decarbonisation the the banks uh, included in this alliance are actually uh, fueling, uh, well, fossil fuels, uh, they're still financing this kind of industry. Um, then, um, so this, this is one of the main problems that we see is the lack of coherence. Then we have the judicialization of the transition process, which is that litigation. So we have these treaties and uh, we have in total more, more or less about 5,000 litigations in the world on climate uh, issues, on, on environmental issues, uh, better said, because it's, uh, it's not only climate, it's all environmental issues. So all these lawsuits uh, are happening worldwide. More, um, there are 663 of them are against the governments for many times for lack of action on action on 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 the on the on the guarantees on on in the environment um so this uh i mean this is a real problem and and this takes us to the third problem of uh, how to um uh, well the, uh, and as you can see even even the chief of the spanish office on climate change uh, is, is, is acknowledging that the EU border adjustment mechanism is going to open up a lot of litigation in countries all over the world. So, um, so every, every lawsuit, every litigation is, takes years. We all know that. And uh, the problem and, and the, the most pro problematic thing that we're seeing is that we're running out of time. I mean, we have barely uh, seven years up to, until the uh, uh, until we can really have uh, money over, um, uh, we can really um, uh, react because um, because we are we are uh, we're using we we are uh, dumping around three thirty six um, 
gigatons every year and we have only 400 left so that means i mean the math is very simple um so um so this is how we see this is this uh, the undersecretary for ecological transition and demographic uh, challenge of uh, of the spanish government uh, of the of the minister of uh, ecological transition and uh, we're seeing this kind of uh, government officials saying that the problem today is the speed. The problem is the time we have to develop actions. And that is why I think it is important for the collectives to have instruments and to have the capacity to launch agreements. So from the government, uh, from a government uh, position of a government that is very, very uh, much in favor of acting, uh, of, of, of really tackling uh, climate change, um, this government is saying um, let, let's let's allow the citizens to do something by themselves because they are clearly in my opinion they're clearly seeing that uh, they're not going to have time so how much longer can we afford to do nothing else than all this which is a lot i mean but um so um so the question is when we are just uh, in a hurry because we'll have to do it like mm, abruptly whose interests will be respected uh and whose priorities will prevail in this process in this abrupt and and uh, and uh, and uh, not very well uh, organized uh, process because we're seeing all these red delays and this lack of effectiveness in the transition process um so this is a, an important question, no? These are important questions. So, so in this context, uh, the citizens' governance uh, comes uh, 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 to, to tell us that maybe there's another way. Um, there's when, when, the, when the Gilets Jaunes um, movement uh, started in France, there were, well, the, one of the solutions or the possibilities that were open were the citizens' assemblies that are happening all over, um, at least in Europe. And um, and so, uh, I mean, this is, for instance, a, a summary of the principles that guided the recommendations of the Spanish Assembly um, not so long ago. Uh, and as you can see, many of, of these principles tell us that, well, there's a precautionary principle, the principle of prevention, so all these principles will will tell us that uh, in front of a lack of effectiveness of the measures that are being taken, the citizens really have to step up and 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 do something else. Um, so uh, so this proposal that we're making here is is a quantitative emissions adjustment mechanism to ensure two rights that we think uh, are have to be respected. First of all, our right to effectively, effectively curb uh, emissions and prevent uh, our extinction. Um, the second right is, um, uh, is about a right to a, a gradual uh, and facilitated transition. So, mm, so with the first right, with, I mean, we really need a, a cap in emissions and then mm, adjusting to uh, a, a cap that is decreasing over time. So a, a cap that starts where we are right now and that uh, has if, uh, sufficient transparency for us to, 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 uh, to really digest um, all, the, all the changes that we have to do in our lives, all the, all the, patterns that we need to move uh, um, how we can we have to change our way of uh, of producing of uh, of uh, living of um, our our spare time our our um our way of heating our homes our way of moving in the world so we need we need this uh this this time uh so uh so the second, the second, uh, the second right is about this gradual transition, uh, facilitated transition. I mean, um, 
with a strong collective consciousness in favor of a transition to a fossil fuel uh, free economy, uh, we, we will have an aligned public uh, policy. Because for instance, is um, we are seeing how in the pandemic, for instance, we had a, our central banks were issuing, uh, were facilitating 0% interest rates uh, through the banking system in order to take us out of the pandemic. So you could perfectly buy a car, uh, a polluting car, a, a regular car um, with 0% uh, interest rates. And right now I'm working in a, in a campaign to, to get the right of um, including uh, in, of the right of uh, financing retrofits of homes at 0% interest rate, and we are not there yet. So um, if you don't have a public policy that is really clearly aligned with the objective of uh, emission reduction, um, everything is much more difficult for people. Um, so at least you need you need to really get that to that point. And then at that point, have the individual guarantee of each citizen to be able to access to the, to the minimum emissions that, uh, that you still need for, for operating your daily life, because you need to adjust uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, gradually, uh, with, uh, with the help of a, a, an aligned public policy, and uh, and uh, with uh, yeah with uh, with all the with all the, the we you need to, that to really make a a transition for everybody not not for just the ones who can do it right now but for everybody. So um, so this um, the we are the the the, the mechanisms that uh, we are going to present all follow this scheme that I'm. I'm presenting, which is um, uh, first of all, um, this in these mechanisms uh, from from the moment they they, they would be uh, in place, it it will be required to have permits to consume or distribute fossil fuels, one or the other. Uh, the second thing is that there will be an equal distribution either of the permits or the dividends um, that result in the selling of the permits. We'll explain the different, uh, the different uh, models. And uh, of course, the third, which is key, is the time decreasing permits. I mean, uh, the, the fact that uh, the permits will be, each year will be less, starting with the point in which we are right now, but decreasing over time gradually so in order to phase out uh, the fossil fuels um, little by little. So the first uh, the first uh, model is cap and dividend. Um, this model was developed by FESTA. Um, Carolyn White, I think, is in the room. So <laughs> if you have any doubts, she can, she can probably step in. And, and, and explain anything you want. Um, so the permits in this model are auctioned by the state. In this model, you need permits to distribute fossil fuels. So, so it's for the fossil fuels companies. Um, and uh, so these permits are auctioned by the state. Uh, so they are, they, these, uh, these companies, which are not very many, uh, there are very few, uh, they have to pay for these permits and pass it. Of course, prices will be increased. So, so the, the cost, the increasing cost will be passed on, on prices and the revenues obtained by the selling of these permits by the state will be distributed as dividends among the, the citizens. And the increase in prices, of course, um, will be partially compensated with this, with this dividend. The dividends are going to be distributed equally, and that's how this is. Uh, um, this is uh, this is the, this this model uh, is meant to work. Of course, very briefly, um, we can go into details later. There is this other uh, system which is called tradable energy quotas. Tech to be brief, 
In this case, uh, where to, the permits are required not to distribute uh, fossil fuels, but to consume fossil fuels. So this is uh, what they what is called a downstream um, system. It's not like just in the few companies that distribute fossil fuels, but in the rest of citizens use. Um, so what is needed is that so the, the people receive the permits for free when for a, a, a part of the permits, the part that is meant to uh, help them buy um, fossil energy, energy in general, uh, the fossil fuel uh, based energy. So they receive these uh, permits for free and with them they pay petrol, uh, electricity when it's based on fossil fuels, etc. So there is a, a carbon price on energy. Uh, of course, you have to pay also in, in, in the currency, uh, the bills, uh, but there is also a, a carbon price. For the rest of products uh, and services, uh, companies also need to buy permits and, and they will be um, passing on the price on the, on the price, passing on the cost on the prices of the products or services. So there is an adjustment via quantities and via prices here, um, and a down and a downstream uh, um, system for 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 these uh, for for these permits, you know. Uh, and of course, it's also and the permits are meant to be decreasing over time. And the the last, yeah, um, five minutes. Okay, no, I'm. I'm Oh, I don't. I don't need any more than that. So the third system is EcoCore. Um, I think Adam is also here. Uh, so um, uh, any any doubts we can we can comment on later. So in this case, this is basically very similar to the tech system that we have just seen, but in this case, all the permits are given for free to the to the, the citizens. So uh, companies <clears throat> and even the state, and also in the in the last case, also the state uh, needed the permits. But um, in this case, uh, all the all the people receive the permits, and they have to surrender the permits to the companies, which they which have to also um, surrender the permits to buy the energy. And of course, the citizens as well, when they buy the, the energy, they have to surrender permits. So everything will have uh, a, a carbon price and a regular price in, in regular currency. So in both cases, in this system and in the previous one, there is a secondary market for permits. Um, and in, I mean, these are basically uh, the three systems that uh, we wanted to present because they have this common uh, this common uh, features and um, and uh, we think that uh, the benefits that uh, that uh, any of them would have is that um, well there will be an effective way of really cap emissions there will be a, a way to, to eliminate the rebound effect the Jevons, uh, the Jevons effect also said, because uh, the efficiency gains that uh, that you get um, many uh, many times even for the because of the the regulation. I mean, for instance, retrofitting of houses will increase the energy efficiency in the in the houses. But how do you stop people from uh, um, spending more energy, or wasting more energy, or using more energy for more things this rebound effect uh, is is not is not going to be solved uh, unless we really put a cap on on energy so another thing is that the regulations all the preparation that we've been do, seeing uh, in with uh, with uh, uh, transition plans with uh, all the regulations that we're seeing about about uh, you know, um, capping emissions uh, are mainly focused on efficiency. So all this regulation will fit very well in this new, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, framework. Um, yeah, we we will see how the consumers have a a forecast of what how many how many permits they will have in the future. So they will be 
able to take decisions quickly on what they have to do um, to, to really manage this, this reduction in, in, in price and satisfy their needs anyway. And also it could solve the trade-offs between the coupling or not the coupling, uh, uh, economic growth uh, and energy use, because actually um, what we'll see is that the carbon emissions will be the, the, the strong limit and then the hard limit. And, and then, well, if, if uh, we are able to grow or not is almost secondary. We'll see if we can or not, because we can see, we've already seen how the central banks will manage the situation. They have done it in the past uh, and they have issued this kind of policies that I have just mentioned as an example in which they will be able to, to, uh, to adjust to the new situation. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there. And in case um, uh, you don't think of anything to say, we, uh, we have a question for you, which is what event could civil society propose to policymakers as a limit to trigger for the implementation of this kind of plan B uh, to redu reduce emissions? Um, and uh, with that, uh, thank you very much for your, for your attention. And I also want to leave you this email in which you can just send us an email for which uh, we will we will with this uh, emails uh, create a, a group uh, an email group in which we can uh, we can update um, anybody who is interested in following up on this issue uh, or the development of this possibility um, they can they can do so. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Susanna and Neus. Um, I wonder if maybe we can copy. I, I was not fast enough to, to oh, copy sorry. the question <laughs> on the chat, yeah. but I was wondering, um, there are a couple of, of um, questions about the measurement that you were talking about, 4,400 um, MTE. So uh, maybe a clarification about this. Armel and Herbe were both questioning if instead of 400 was 40. And uh, and then after that, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the opportunity to Alex, who just raised his hand, and then we can continue the conversation with that question as well, with other questions that people could have. Um, Neus, uh, can Neus. You, you answer about the the gigatons? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I I I I saw uh, a question in the in the chat, and yes. I and I answer that not because. The, the I understood the the Armel question, no, or asked if the what it was uh, four hundred megatons for Spain, and no, it's we are we are talking about four hundred gigatons for every, for the wall for the entire wall all mm -hmm. the wall, and okay. in each, each year yes. the wall uh, dam. 30, 32 gigatons in the in this in the atmosphere. That means that and in less than 10 years, that is the, we arrive to the limit to 1.5 mm -hmm. degrees. <laughs> Thank you so much, Neos, for the clarification. Alex, and then it's gonna be Tom and then Armel. Thank you so much for uh, raising your hands. Thank you. Um, yeah, regarding your question. Uh, you you mentioned can it be put in the chat again because I, I'm not even sure if it completely aligns with the question. But it was what civil society can do, right? Yeah, well, uh, I was uh, I was uh, yeah. The the idea is to uh, the question is what I mean. This is a, a possibility. No, what what event or what uh, what kind of uh, limit can can um, can civil society set um, for themselves and for the the policymakers to really trigger something else to trigger uh, the implementation of this plan b which of course um, it's very um, we, we it's we're looking for ways to um, be able to enforce this kind of, uh, of policy um, yeah, that's that's the question. Oh, 
to enforce some kind of policy. Okay, uh, then, then I think I misunderstood your question because, okay, if, if you put the question in the chat, I will rethink about it because now my answer it is there. Is okay. Alice, she just yeah. added to the chat. So maybe you can reflect a little bit and you can. Uh, can, you post it, can you post it again because I can't see it? No. That was weird. It sometimes oh, happens. Sorry, 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 it's true. Sorry. Sorry, she just sent it to me. So, yeah. Tom, your turn. Okay, this is a, a webinar sponsored by We All. There is no clear indication as to why We All sponsored this, what they're going to do as a follow up, and how they're going to implement their their follow up for example all of the issues that have been discussed up to the present time have appeared in the cop meetings 1 through 27 where major governments and other parties have made promises to deliver and none of those have been met in spite of the uh, participation of citizens behind all of this. The citizens do not seem to have had any effect in including uh, some of the very active ones that have had national and international attention. Number two is all the solutions to this re requires either a reduction in the use of energy and or uh, the more efficient use of of uh, renewables so to speak the latter one is problematic because that means continued consumption of earth's resources which can't meet all the needs of the renewables and so we're basically trying to solve a problem that creates a much larger problem for society on the other hand we have seen currently that there is no way we're going to reduce the with renewables by eliminating the fossil fuels because the fossil fuels are critical in the renewable uses. Uh, so I, I'm at, at, at a standstill to see what is being proposed here that is novel, more interesting, more effective, and what we all hopes to get done that it can't be done by all the student, the citizens activism for years, attendance at the COP meetings and other ones, and the effect that governments and industry have made significant promises that are unenforceable and not effective. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, so to the point regarding we all, um, I'm not gonna leave that to Susanna and Neil, so I'm gonna leave the technical, the more technical part, but uh, we all is a space for co-creation, conversations, connections, collaborations to happen. We are not, this is not an sponsored, this is, we create a spaces where actually we can share knowledge, where we can share ideas, where we come together and we challenge each other and we share, and the understanding and the knowledge. So we are not in, in terms of that we are not deciding what is going to be taken from all of this and it's gonna to take to policymakers. What we believe is in by coming together, by sharing knowledge and ideas, we will come, you know, we, one day we will be able to collaborate and impact more. But obviously I wanted to, we always always gonna open the space for membership for hubs, to bring what is what they're trying to advance, what they're trying to work, and to actually get the knowledge from others in order to make it better, to make it more accessible, and to make it a reality like the proposals that Susana and Neus are bringing in here. So I think it's very important to acknowledge that we all is that space, the same way that last month we were talking about how we build a well-being economy with children and young people, this time is time for us to discuss as citizens what else we can do with the information that they're providing. But as you have heard, there are different initiatives. So how can we come together and how can we bring all that knowledge into doing something? So I just wanted to share this part from um, the real perspective. But then obviously, Susanna and Neos, I'm gonna let you respond to the different comments um, that Tom has raised. I think they're very, um, they're very important. Okay. 
Yeah, no, no. I think that it's a very relevant question. Why, why, uh, why this and not nothing else? I mean, uh, if things were so simple, uh, legislation already uh, uh, would be enforced. So, so we don't, we wouldn't have this problem anymore. But uh, that's not the way it works. And uh, the thing is that um, uh, from our agent point of view. It, everybody has um, a, a position and uh, and the fact is that the ones who have to enforce uh, and put put uh, put uh, mechanisms for uh, for um, for making this a reality all these treaties that have been already issued etc um, is that um, the, the ones who have to do it are the politicians and politicians are short term minded. Um, and this is um, a problem for a long term problem situation that we need to face. And it's also I mean, I, I'm, I'm an economist and I, I see it in the in when when somebody has to say, OK, we are in a in a bubble in a a speculative bubble and we need to stop this well nobody wants to do this and the problem is that the the bubble explodes in the end nobody i mean nobody puts the 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 bell to the cat because <laughs> i don't know if it's that the way that you put it in english but but uh, this is this is what happens i mean because nobody wants to come with the bad news that you have been doing something that is unsustainable and that now you have to cut it down and it's going to be painful um, so that is the problem, but because if we, um, um, as an economist, if, if we really wait until it explodes, I mean, this is not just a bubble, this is not just a crisis, this is the end. And, uh, and, and there's a point in which I think that the only ones who can do something uh, about this are the citizens. Uh, so by raising awareness uh, to other citizens, and by also, I don't know what, uh, but I think uh, uh, um, I think we should all research on how we could do something like this because um, the moment this could be in place, everything will be much more easy. Um, political powers will collaborate fully, um, but it's not going to come from them. And this is this is our point. Our point is that we really see all this all these efforts um there are of course uh, very i mean uh, very very high high i mean we should we should be thankful for all these treaties the people who have, who's been working behind the scenes uh to make it happen it's uh, it's really really important but uh, um they don't have the power and only we have the power only the people uh so so in my view i mean we should be looking into you know starting a movement about something like this and this is a tool that can really deliver any of them uh, any of these one, one comment um, on that is um, a number of us a number of us have had conversations on this before and the problem that seems to emerge is that the power to make the changes rests in the financial sector and the, the economic sector, the theory, the academic end of it, even with the technical end of it, does not have the power that the finance sector has. And there's no way that I understand that the citizens are able to get to the finance sector, which is controlling whether these things get done or not, because it all boils down to finance, not economic models, and not the problems that have been identified. I agree, and uh, I think that. Oh, so I, I'm gonna be very brief on this, and I I, I let other interventions. Um, so it's true, you are right. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm that that's what I'm doing. I'm working in the in the in the in advocating. You know, I'm a campaigner for for the Unlock campaign, which uh, is uh, aiming to to get zero uh, percent. Uh, finance uh, for uh, loans for for retrofitting houses, uh, but of course it's just that the start of um, including um, including uh, climate risk um, 
risk uh, in in the in 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 banks' portfolios, including uh, a lot of uh, uh, things that in the in the bank that will green the banking sector, which is something that should be happening and is not happening. So so all these campaigns, I mean, I need we need we need both things. We need the financial sector to be to be transformed, and we need I, we need also something like this because even so, even with that. Um, I think that the, most of the the legislation is on, on on efficiency, and efficiency alone won't provide the reduction in 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 consumption. Okay, so um, I just want to raise awareness of the time. I always try to be very respectful. Um, as you know, this is an hour long event, and there are four people who have their hands up. I want to listen to everybody before we close the space. But I want to reinforce the proposal that um, Susana and Neus are bringing on continuing these conversations with everybody who is passionate about it, who have the knowledge. So this is not the end. This is just the beginning of a group that it will continue the conversation if you are passionate about it, as I am I'm feeling it. But I want to make sure that right now we're going to listen to Armel, to Jan, to Caroline and Jim before we wrap up this space. So Armel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, good uh, time to exchange and thank you for sharing. Uh, I, uh, I understand your role is to share. Um, I am not so optimistic and like uh, Tom, uh, we, we, we know that it's difficult, but we need to be optimistic. And in France, we have had uh, three years before a large consensus about the citizen convention to to, to uh, think about uh, climate. It was not efficient, but we have proposed in this time uh, a, a similar system that we, Susanna has proposed. Uh, it's a budget for citizens, and we call it Compte Carbone or Carbon Account, uh, EU, if you want to see the, the website. And we have uh, 20 to 30 allies in France, like Hervé or like English one, like Adam, and we have Belgium citizen. The two elements for this uh, system is to, to give a budget to any citizen and to ask to reduce 6% in a year to obtain uh, the neutrality in 2050. And in the same time, we ask the companies to put the labels about uh, con carbon content on any products or services. And in this time, uh, we have a lot of uh, companies who are very interested by this way. In France, we have a way of uh, mission companies, and they are very uh, using that. Politics are not so easy in France. But uh, politics in Belgium, for instance, are pushing this way. And perhaps uh, we are launching also a large debate in France about uh, this question. And I think we have to, to push together. Uh, about, uh, I stop now to put, uh, to put uh, lines on the chat and you, can, you could see and I yes. give the floor. Thank you so much. I was going to say that it would be wonderful you, but you can put it on the chat because after this, the recording obviously is going to be shared with everybody, the chat and the questions and all the information that people are sharing. And so it would be wonderful to capture it there. Jan, it's going to be you now. Thank you, Anna. Well, first, uh, Susanna and uh, uh, Noam, thank you for your presentation. In Holland, we are working already 10 years with the Dutch Footprint Group on this issue. We believe we have to push this because the other lines are not very helpful up to now. I have two short questions. One is, do you have your preference uh, out of this three, your personal preference out of the three? And the second question, is EcoCore really different with tax? Is a tradable energy quotas. What is the main difference between those two? Okay, um, the main difference between the two is that tax is uh, 
they distribute the permits only for a part of the permits, the ones that you you will you will need to surrender to pay energy bills, energy bills alone. The other the other parts of the of the permits are distributed to the companies. So the companies that all the companies will need to buy the permits in order to pay for the energy bills. Um, so there is an adjustment via prices and also via quantities because um, because uh, the, the people will be receiving the permits for the energy, but uh, the, the uh, components of carbon of the rest of goods and services will have to come through the price um, in the, so, and, and the, in the case of EcoCore, the, 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 all, the, all the permits are, the, are distributed to the, to the people. Oh. And uh, and uh, and uh, and they they that there is no other system, oh. yeah. And okay. uh, yeah. And uh, uh, regarding um, regarding our preference, uh, really, we um, we I think we we need to respect all these all these systems because they um, they all um, have. Uh, very very well grounded uh, uh, ideas of how it will work and uh, and we never know how the reality is going to pan out um my um my uh, my uh, training as an economist a monetary economist um makes me see the eco core system as uh, uh, um a carbon currency really like uh, um, so, so I think that uh, it it may have more potential, but also of course it's much more difficult to implement because you need two prices for everything. So um, I mean, at this point we are not. Uh, I mean, I think I think that the, the idea, the main, the most important idea, is that uh, any of these systems is used. Is 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 uh, mm -hmm. is 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 uh, is tested somewhere in some country, so we can see how. And and of course, in the implementation, you will see the requirements, and you will see which of the systems is more uh, adequate. And um, so, I, I think it's very important. Also, uh, carbon um, carbon account carbon account account. Uh, sorry, Armel. Uh, I wasn't on time. Uh, I didn't have the time to really in include the the system in the presentation, but very very happy to include it in the group. I mean, for, because the idea is is and also um, uh, this last one from the Netherlands. I mean, I think the 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 point is to have this kind of of system uh, implemented. However, the the details um, it doesn't matter really. No. Thank, Thank you, Susanna. Thank you. Um, I'm, I know I'm, I'm conscious about the time. I hope that you're going to be able to stay a few more minutes over the hour um, so we can give Caroline and Jim the time to either share their opinions or, or ask the questions. But uh, stay with us a few more minutes so we can um, wrap up properly all together. Caroline. Thanks a lot, Anna, and thanks very much to Susanna and Nair. That was a really good, clear presentation. Um, just a couple of comments on some of the comments that have happened <laughs> and on your question as well. Um, I think uh, this central idea of putting a, a clear limit on the either the supply end of fossil fuel, on the emissions that people can have on an individual level, this is really fundamental. And I'm not sure, I think sometimes when people first hear it, they don't realise how fundamental it is, and it's a little hard to, to grasp. This isn't the same as for a lot of activists are asking for at COP at the moment. A lot of I would agree with the vast majority of what people are asking for at COP, the activists, but a lot of it's very piecemeal. It's very, as you know, it's focuses on one particular thing, on stopping particular things, investments going particular ways, that kind of thing. It doesn't it doesn't really prevent rebound or prevent emissions going elsewhere to other parts of the economy. This is very fundamental. And I, do, I just think it's so important um, to think in this sort of terms, this sort of global holistic terms. Um, I think there's real synergies with the fossil fuel non proliferation treaty. And I think it's something we could try and work with, you know, um, more and more people now are talking about fossil fuel phase out. And that is something that links with this. And I think it's a more general way to see it, but it's, it's if we're thinking about how to work on this and get it more to the public eye, that's a good way to go. Um, and the final thing, um, uh, just I also think there's enormous scope for 
helping um, climate justice, the cause of climate justice uh, through carbon budgeting that also encompasses global south countries. It's a big question, but I think there's an awful lot there. Um, so yeah, thanks again, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Thank you so much, Caroline. Jim, is your turn. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll, I, I want to be brief, um, but responding to um, Tom's, you know, well put questions about why all this talk and, and no action, it's clearly a political problem. I think everyone recognizes that and uh, and that we have to uh, we have to amass enough political power to force action and uh, th therefore you know, one of the first questions, not the only one, but the, the first question is, is self-interest. And um, I think, you know, the some of the points that were raised by Neus and Susanna in their excellent presentations were, uh, but, but could be stressed more, is the redistributive act aspect of it, that if the, um, if the permits are sold, the uh, the proceeds of the I'm also an economist like like Susanna uh, the the proceeds are are distributed and distributed equally that's that's very important and and it's really basic it's easy there's plenty of data that the rich use in every country use a lot more energy than the uh, than everybody else and so a uh, the a redistributive system would um, would give would give more to the people with less with less income in in proportional terms um, than they would than they would pay into it. Um, but I, I I think there's one other point about the the popular mood is that um, and popular support is that this is going to be painful as as Susanna said the longer we wait, the more painful it gets one way or the other, either because we have to go faster because we have other kinds of pain coming down on our head or both. Um, and, and therefore, um, there are, there are thing, <clears throat> other things that government can do to make it less painful. And, you know, monetary, uh, expansive monetary policies and, and redistributive uh, fiscal policies by the government can um, can ease the transition and, and and again there there has to be a uh, a, a redistributive political vision here about you know making this not just um, ecologically sustainable but politically sustainable to get the, the majority of the of the population behind it, but and I I do I do think it's doable. It's going to be hard, but it's it's the it's the struggle of our of our life um, of our time. So I think it can be done. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much, Jim. I don't know if um, um, Neo, Susana, or anybody else in the room would like to respond as well, or you uh, last thought. Um, this is coming to an end. Um, my feeling is that there is still so much to keep discussing and talking. And I think there are many different people here who are directly involved with all the different alternatives that Susanna and Neus have shared. I hope that you are going to find the time and the, um, the energy to come together and to keep exchanging what is happening in different countries, how you're doing it, how you are reaching different citizens, because I think it's very relevant. But um, I wanted to give um, Neus and Susanna a minute if they want to finish this um, incredible local to global event today with um, thoughts or message or call to action, invitation, whatever you want to call it. Neus, <laughs> invitation to, 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 gather, to gather to us and, and do this quiz further. <laughs> The the, yeah. the 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 next days and months. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, everybody who was here, all the promoters of these systems that uh, have uh, come as well. Um, and uh, I think uh, it, it is it's important that we uh, that we you know get uh, together and 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 keep working on on ways on how to how to make this happen um yeah that's it yeah that's everything thank you very much to everybody
Thank you. Thank well, you thank you. Much. Thank you so much. Um, as you can see on the chat, Susanna has already shared again the email address where you can get in touch with both of them to continue these conversations and to continue collaborating with each other. Um, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. I'm going to do it right now at the end. I am Anna Gomez, and I am the network lead, co-lead for the Wellbeing Economy Alliance. And uh, we are always um, welcoming everybody into this alliance because we need everybody if we want to bring a well-being economy um, worldwide. So join us. Uh, you can find all the information on our website, weall.org. And uh, if anybody's based in Portugal or Spain, please join the Wheel Iberia Hub, where Neo, Susan, and I are part of. And uh, it's been a pleasure to share this time with all of you. Please continue talking to each other, connecting with each other. It's been a pleasure. Susana, Neus, thank you so much for thank your you. time and knowledge. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye.